rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we come to you now to give you glory, honor, and praise. Thank you, you are the one true God, and we thank you for your grace. Yes. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. Yes. We thank you that you have demonstrated above uh, everything that, that you are God just by your nature, your loving nature, dear Lord. And we thank you that uh, th that demonstration through your son, Jesus Christ, and through the Holy Spirit that lives in us, we can feel that we are continuing to receive revelation as to about how we are to go about our lives, uh, to, not for ourselves, but to worship you. Lord, you created us so yes. that you, we could love you back and, and worship you. And we thank you. Yes. Dear Father, help us to continue to be the light uh, yes. here in this world uh, so that those uh, that are out there who see us, whether they be brothers and sisters in Christ or not, that they see the light of your son Jesus in us and we see it in others who are our brothers and sisters in Christ. And for those who are not, Lord, uh, just let them uh, pay attention to what is going on and that that influence that you, you are, are imparting upon them, uh, yes. we hope that they choose you just like we have chosen you and have received that ultimate blessing. Yes. Dear Father, uh, for the work that we are, are doing you know, on a daily basis, uh, to help us to not be selfish with it, but to, to, in some way help those who are in need and yeah. help us to, and, and whatever it is that we do, that we worship you and, and everything that, that we, uh, and with every breath that, that we have, with every move that we make with our bodies, dear Lord, for this temple that you've given us, let us give you the glory, honor, and praise with it. Dear Father, for the words that we speak today, not just now for this, this fellowship, but for hereafter, whether it be with our families, friends, and even someone who may, uh, for this day uh, that you've given us, uh, turn out to be an enemy. Let us let us be graceful. Yes. Let us be loving. Let us be, be kind. Let the fruits of the Spirit uh, come out uh, this day. Father, we, we humble ourselves to you, knowing that all the good things that come into our lives uh, are because of you. Yes. There's nothing that we've done, you can earn it. Uh, that, that we, we, we can't we can't uh, make it happen on our own unless it is within your goodwill. Yes. And so we thank you, dear Father. We thank you for the resources that you've given us. We thank you for the the uh, this 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 man Kenneth Taylor who who you've uh, you put here uh, to, to 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 lead us in this endeavor. Use us, and, Lord. Uh, we, just, we just yes, Lord, and and we know that. Uh, they will not stop here. Hallelujah. That you will, that you will uh, use each of us yes. so that we can go out into the world and be a part of that commission that your son Jesus, our Savior and our King, um, stated uh, long ago. We amen. say these things in your precious and glorious and holy name. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen, amen. 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 I don't know why I had that, uh, that admission, because remember, I had it set up before you just to pop on in. Um, but I guess I, I, I just keep adding them as they come. But uh, how you doing, Elder? Oh, he, he's, he's connecting audio. Hey, why he's doing that, what I wanted to do last week was talking about the fact that we're sent by faith to change the world. And we, we ran into the the, uh, the, the, the title of, of some of the, you know, like the Bible, I got, got a little title, subtitles in there. And we talked about <laughs> the uh, revelations of them and whether they will cause you to miss the whole point. And we talked about the kingdom of, of, of the gospel was, was, was one of them. And I was, I went back to study it just to see whether, whether that, part about the kingdom preaching of the kingdom should be part of should be the driving theme of the go preach go preach the gospel and uh what i did was when i was studying i checked it out and there were a lot of forms of the gospel uh that's in the bible let me show it to you and what i want and my point is i think it's Reason had the gospel in the Great Commission. Let me see that one second. Read 
You can see it, right? Yeah. Okay. The, the one of the things I was seeing on that is that um, I'm trying to change this view for me. There. All right. Um, the title here said the subject is go. That's a hype. That's a hyphen there with the word go uh, into the world, preaching all the gospel and teaching deserve all things. And what I wanted to jump to before I read this again is when I went and looked at the gospel, and because I was wondering why I said gospel, you know, if we talked about last week, we said, is it talking about the revelation of the gospel of the kingdom? Why did it just say gospel of the kingdom? At least that's for me. When I when we study, sometimes I look at just to see, well, that is a powerful revelation. Understanding you need to preach the gospel of the kingdom. But why did it just say, if it's so important, why did it say that, right? Uh, and then when I looked it up, it said, this is the number of times the word gospel came up. And you can see there's, and I, what I did, I put them in a number of how many times they came up in sequence. Uh, the gospel of Christ. Then you got the gospel of God, seven times, the gospel of the kingdom which is the uh, four times. And then you got the gospel of peace, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of God. You got the gospel of grace of God. You got the gospel of, the, of his son, the glorious gospel of Christ, and the glory gospel of circumcision. So I was looking at that, and I, I just wanted to say, maybe that's why it was written. Uh, I didn't want us to walk away thinking that we should have, because I think we was talking, right? We were talking, should we say the gospel of the kingdom, right? And I'm, think, I'm thinking of saying the reason it may have written that way, because it's talking about the full gospel. In other words, we as, 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 as believers being equipped to preach the gospel and teach the gospel is understand that there's different variation of the of aspect of the gospel. So your job is to preach the entire gospel. Amen. Uh, as you move forward, it just it just how I look at it. And then I like the fact that when I look at the numbers, they were saying is that one is more. Before we go back and read the scripture, the other one I saw was the gospel of Christ. And 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 what is Christ, Elder? I think that when we think in terms of the gospel, and, and, and funny thing, I was thinking about that when I got this morning, because you know I was talking about making it concise, what gospel are we really preaching? The gospel of Christ, I think in terms of uh, uh, blessedness, uh, it was a title for Jesus, it is a title for Jesus, but then we're admonished, encouraged, exhorted to put on Christ. Right. So now, this Johnson is going this is my understanding of it. In him is the fullness of all that we 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 uh we seek. Right. So he said he is he said I did not come to destroy what I came to fulfill. Uh -huh. So the fullness of the of the of the law, the fullness of, of, of prophecy, the fullness of all things are founded in Jesus Christ. So yeah. to me, the gospel of Christ, um the gospel of reconciliation. We have been, and, and that is one place that it talks about it, the scripture says we have been given the gospel of reconciliation. We have now become one with God. And I think that is the point that uh, the way has been made anyway for us to become one with God, for yeah. the breach to be restored, for us to be now reunited to our father whom we were separated, who we were separated from in the fall in the garden. That is the, to me, that is the true gospel. Now that we have, that is the concise, you know, that's the, 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 the crux of it. That's the meat of it. You, we have been reconciled to our Father through the Lord Jesus Christ, through the work that he did. Right. That's it. That's the gospel. Everything else kind of flows out of that. The gospel as far as um, the, what we're taught, the, 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 the gospel of the kingdom, he is the door to the kingdom. If you if you're not in him, then you're not in the kingdom. The gospel of God, he is the he is the manifestation of the invisible God. So if you're not in him, then you're not in God, and God is not in you. The gospel of peace, the peace is with God. So if you if you're not one with Christ, you have no peace with God. 
Right. So all the things that we're seeing here, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that is the whole, all that we do is about that one man. Because it says to us, and I'm going to hush you, it says to us that every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God. That's right. a, that's a, what can I say? That is the common thing among all of creation. A common, one common fact in all of creation is that we are going to acknowledge the sovereignty and the divinity of this man, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the, he is to me, the gospel. It's his being, his person. All that encompasses, encompasses is the gospel. Okay, follow. What, what, what does what does Christ mean though? Can, can Christ mean? Let's say something real quick, just real real quick. Hey, hey, Chris, can you mute your uh your mic, please? Was that, was having, that Chris? I was having a dog confrontation right then. <laughs> yeah, you got Cujo all in the background and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should be good now. We going another way. We done passed the dog now. <laughs> we can we can still hear your footsteps like you sweeping or something. That's all right, because his mic was off. What, what was that? Um but but on this uh pastor so so basically Go ahead. The, the gospel, I mean if you just break that down, all that is is the good news. The, the good, good news of Christ. Yeah. The good news of God, the good news of the kingdom, the good news of peace, the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the good news of grace, of the grace of God, good news of his Son, the glorious good news of Christ, the good news of the uncircumcision. Right. So if we look at it in that term, which basically says what the gospel is, uh -huh. it is truly all good news good. and it should all be taught in its rightful place it is rightful. so yeah. i don't see i don't right. see why none of this should be yeah. left out right so and and the fact that you can you can break it down these yeah. are just like subtitles yeah. of the good news exactly you know the book is the good news and right. the subtitles are you know of Christ, of God, of the kingdom, of peace, of Jesus Christ, the Son of you know, and so on and so forth. Right. So uh the 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 main thing is that they're all talking about the gospel the works of God. Yeah. The redemptive work. Uh-huh. That's all this is talking about. Exactly. The redemptive work of our father through his son jesus christ exactly and it, and it showed i think i think another thing too is that it's just showing the different emphasis of of aspect of the gospel mm -hmm. when you're talking about christ christ means the anointing right yes. that and and and, and, it's, and it's emphasized 10 times at least the gospel anointing is kind of ties in what you said earlier about sickness and disease is that i've been anointed to yeah. combat this disease as it comes in my life. I've been anointed to, to, to tackle the things of life through Christ Jesus. You know what I mean? There, there is a, there, and I'm glad that we're on this. This is really blessed me this morning because I got a preacher that I'm doing, uh on the street. Uh -huh. Now, the thing that I find is that there's a foundation for this. There's a there there is there there is a there is a foundation that has to be established before we can actually I think now this Johnson y'all help me uh, I, before we can begin to branch or even to expound on the rest of it there's something that has to be established and that thing is that has to be established is in the man himself in Jesus of Nazareth our our belief system is based upon his death and his resurrection. Uh huh. If he did not die, if he was not crucified for our sins, if he did not die, and if he did not resurrect, then all that we teach out of this, all of this that we would teach concerning the, the kingdom and the, and the gospel of the kingdom and of him and of everything else, it, it, like Paul said, it's, 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 it's not real. It's right. a lie. So, so the first thing that has to be established is him. 
So he he's the thing that's put on the chop. I mean, on the chop book, but on the chop book first. Right. You must receive this man, Jesus of Nazareth. Period. If you don't receive him as the only begotten Son of God, as the manifested image of God, as the as the third person in the Godhead, if you don't receive him, then none of this other stuff has a basis. None of this other stuff actually amounts to anything. It, it doesn't. It, it's almost like trying to live life without breathing. Yeah. If you don't have air, then everything else is just a, it's a mood issue. It's like, hey, you know, that ain't important no more. If Jesus isn't enthroned in, that, in our hearts, if he is not a quote unquote center of our joy, yeah. then everything else is a watch. And I think that is what I have historically in my experiences in, in, in Christendom have not had that seal. Mm. That was not preached to me. Okay. I, I was not. I wasn't called to meditate on that. I wasn't. I wasn't inspired to really seal this in my heart. Whether or not I believe this man he actually died and that he's alive. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We talk. We talk about it when, in passing. We kind of like, oh yeah, that's true. But do you really, in your heart, believe that this man died two thousand years ago and got up and is alive today? Wow. It, it's a lot. But it is the foundation, and if we can receive it, if we're able to embrace it, then the rest of the stuff flows, you know, it flows a lot more readily out of it. If he could defeat death, what is he not able to do? Well, another thing too, like I say, I think one of the scriptures we had last week is, you have access to the kingdom. You have access to the Father. You have access to, you know, hope born again is through Christ Jesus. The only, only. And, that that's the starting point. You know? okay. That is a very starting point because you see all things were of him. Yeah. All things were created by him for him. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, he was slain for the foundation of the world. What I do like the fact is that, you know, that one scripture that uh Jim and I used to bring up a lot in the past was about forget not all his benefits. Yeah, right? and that's the part. That's the second portion of it. And I asked and I'm gonna the hush there. Because yeah. where we have not established now, now, this is Johnson as begins with y'all. Please help me. My thought is, my understanding is, there was a relationship that existed between God and man prior to the fall of the garden, right? Right. There was a position of sonship, it was a fellowship that existed that when they were one in a sense, uh, they had a really tight relationship with one another. Then something happened in the garden, and we called it the sin. We fell away from God. We breached the relationship. Yeah, we became disconnected. Yeah, we became disconnected. What Jesus Christ did, and I says, He gave us an improved manifestation of who we are, because prior to the fall in the garden, we did not have the knowledge of good and evil. Right. We were made in the image of God, but we did not have that knowledge of good and evil. Mm. Now, after the fall, we gain a knowledge of good and evil. And now we've been reconciled to the Father. Yeah. So my understanding of it is that our position as the sons of God in this dispensation is better than Adam's position was when he existed in the garden initially. We have the same access to the Father as Adam had. Yes. That, that was what Adam Jesus had. Christ acquired for us. Yeah. So when we look at that, is there any sick? If we're one with God, is there any sickness in God? Is there any property in God? Is there any light in God? Is there any darkness in God? Is it in Him there is no shadow of turning? Mm. He is light and He is life. So if we're one with Him, what exists at the core of us except light and life? Yes, sir. But how can sin, I mean, how can death reign in our mortal memory? How can these things have dominion over us if we are one with the Father? And, 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 and that's where. I still think we have to reckon it though. Like, you know I'm saying? You can't with them. You have to reckon in your mind. Your mind has to be able to receive these things and, and they begin to manifest if we're able to embrace it. And, uh, and I think that's where my, I can't say it's a struggle, but that's where the process, my process of growth is right now. If I'm legit. Okay. If my, if my thinking is legit, then we are now back in the garden, in a sense, if that makes sense, relationship wise with the Father. We're back in the garden. In an improved state, having a knowledge of good and evil. Yes. Does that make sense? Is that, yeah. is that legit? Yeah, well, see, to me, that's not better. It's really it's, not. Say uh, it again. Not to me, knowledge of good and evil is not better. 
I think it's 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 a it's an area of our life that we have to constantly battle because oh. our because of our flesh. Um, I don't think I just can't imagine that being it really wasn't an issue for Adam. And um, and to exist without having that tug, constantly fleshly tug, to please the flesh, and to please the five senses, is is far greater than us who have to deal with a desire to please our flesh. So in my mind. Uh, yeah, we've been we've been put in a position back to uh, we, we, we've had a paradigm shift to where we're back to a garden like state. But along with that initial reunion with God, there is the the knowledge of good and evil. So uh, without that knowledge, there is just good. Hmm. There is just there is just a union with God without any uh, uh, restrictions, inhibitions. Uh, uh, you, you just exist. And in your existence, you're glorifying God. Yeah, I Outside. think better, better might have been not, not the proper word to use. But, but you remember the one scripture where it says, it said that the, the man has, he, we were made in his image, so we were like, stuff that. They part of the scripture. And in another place it says that if you eat from this fruit, God will know that you, he knows that you have, you will gain this knowledge of good and evil. And you become as he is. You become as you will become as God, knowing good and evil. So it seems there was just one element missing missing from us at the time we were created. And that was the knowledge of good and evil. And when the fall actually occurred, the father said, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. It was like we were made with a missing part. <laughs> it's like there was just a little bit left out for, a for us to be to be uh, like God. We were almost like God. We made His image, but we were missing that knowledge of good and evil. But once we acquired the knowledge of good and evil, then we became almost completely as God is, with the exception of. Uh, well, in, in, in quality, similar, not divine or everlasting. We're not the father, I'll put it that way. We're you know, part I, of the father, but we're not equal to the father. Yeah, Elder, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not as eloquent on, on, on these topics as you, as you are, but let me go like this. Um, you know, that, in, that initial relationship that Adam and Eve had, um, I look at it as, you know, the innocence of a babe, right? So when children are young, you know, we, we, what do we call it? The age of innocence, you know, right. um, when they do things and they do things that are wrong, but they don't know that they're wrong. When we look at them as parents, as, as grandparents, uh, we, we don't see the fact that they've done something wrong. Does that make sense? Right. However, well, when they, Right. And, and, and we don't hold them accountable. That's right. You know, we may correct them, but we don't hold them accountable for those those errors. However, there is a point in time where we recognize that, you know what, you know better. And then we chastise them. We punish them, you know, a, a, according to the, the violation, you know, and that's kind of how I see this. I mean, uh, uh, as we're discussing it, I'm trying to because I see what you're what you're saying and I see what what uh at least i think i see what you're saying and i think i see what what brother addison is saying and so maybe if we put it in that context um that might be more palatable for you um you know again you know when they were there they didn't know better right uh so so they didn't have that knowledge and uh and and now that they know better well there's those consequences you know so well you know